Hi there, my dear friends. Uh, I am back, uh, Dean Jo Santos, uh, Balagtas, Biscara, on a subject matter that I've been so eager to talk about with you. Being a lawyer CPA and because of my extensive experience in the corporate management world, I have always been known to be to have expertise in commercial law, taxation. But this is very funny because uh, when you talk about uh, law practice, commercial law is dominated by the big law firms in Makati, and it is very difficult to compete with them when you talk about the big law firms. The same is true with taxation, where uh, even the big uh, CPA firms would offer tremendous competition with you. So, you know, you can essentially become, quote-unquote, an expert in the subject matter of commercial law and taxation, more on the academe than, of course, in this YouTube uploads. But uh, in my, uh, how many years, 27 years experience uh, as a practicing lawyer, the fields where I have been uh, extensively involved in is criminal law, followed by labor law, and of course uh, the area of civil law where, you know, uh, family relationship, particularly annulment of marriage, becomes a very dominant thing. Now, among us who will go into practice, take note, that the field of criminal law is really one of the most prolific fields. And you have tremendous uh, opportunity to really practice law here. Like the Department of Justice is not involved in uh, civil law or uh, taxation. I don't even think they're involved in political. They're heavily, you know, in, in criminal law because they handle the public prosecution side. All the public prosecutors are on the side of the Department of Justice. And so, you know, what else would they be working on except criminal law? None. When you go to the public attorney's office, because you've got the battery of public prosecutors on one side, obviously the opposite side, the defense, would be equally contending with this big chunk of uh, public prosecutors. So the public attorney's office would equally be heavily loaded with criminal law. And so finally, we end up with our individual practitioners where I belong to. And definitely every person who comes to me is heavily uh, under stress in the involvement on criminal cases. And so this is a very beautiful subject matter to, to deal with. Now, uh, the other area where I really enjoy uh, the, uh, working with is labor law, where uh, assuming nobody's listening, I am rated to be one of the private practitioners who made tremendous money out of labor cases. And the funny thing about it is I am a management man. And almost all... I think all of my labor cases are defending the workers. And perhaps my advantage is because I come from the uh, management sector. I can understand how the uh, labor lawyers for the management would be attacking the, the problem. Because I was in that situation as part of management. But in all fairness... It doesn't always mean that uh, management is, is always right. And that's precisely where I, I come in very strong because I know where uh, management uh, can come in. And I'm referring to a certain segment of the employers who are really, if I may uh, be kind to them, abusive of their uh, rights, you know, and uh, to the prejudice of the workers. That is the reason why I don't feel uh, uh, I have worked with a lot of good uh, employers, multinationals, even local companies that, even, that would even include Chinese corporations. I work very, very well with the uh, young family of Permaline 
period by I'd like to make mention about how good and how honest and how compassionate uh, my immediate superior there, Michael Young, uh, was. You know, when we were negotiating, uh, I was heading, of course, the management panel of this collective bargaining agreement. And uh, Michael Young, you can see his idealism, you know, his desire to give everything to our people so that our people would have all the uh, uh, comforts and would dedicate themselves to it. And that was when I learned that uh, you can only give half of your uh, love and care for the uh, your rank and file workers. It was uh, a major, major group that's in between management and labor and the so-called federations. And I'm not referring to all federations. I'm simply uh, referring to my own limited experiences dealing with respectably large uh, uh, federation uh, labor unions. And I was shocked uh, to, to learn that uh, my idealism could be compromised by the lack of it dealing with the supposed uh, guardians of uh, welfare of labor. Anyway, uh, our subject matter today is one of the most interesting topics, and this is the uh, questions in the 2022 by examinations on criminal law. Uh, in the past, I have always uh, had uh, been invited, uh, for example, in the Philippine Judicial Academy to speak about uh, some cases, some speaking engagements uh, on very beautiful concepts in political law. Uh, there are also some invitations uh, from uh, the local governments, especially the province of Bulacan, where I was supposed to speak side by side with the Malacanang uh, bigwig uh, who did not come, and I was the only who came, but, and I didn't have that kind of you know very famous name, and so I was talking to the very young uh, vice mayors of Bulacan, and I I heard their whispers during lunchtime they said uh, they will all be closer to the door so that after I deliver my first 30 minutes they would uh, slowly sneak out so I, I felt very sad uh, you know, I talked about exactly the concept of socio-economic development uh, should be nurtured at the lower level and finally federalism and the compliment I got there was they did not walk out. They did not stick out. Many of them who were at the door started moving up on the front line. And at about 3 o'clock, when I am already, perhaps, who knows, 45 minutes past my timetable, during the open forum, somebody stood up and said, uh, Din Biscara, uh, we are surprised to hear about how good a speaker you are and how idealistic. Our only question is, why are you not in the political arena? <laughs> and I said, because I was born poor. And I, unlike you, who are vice mayors, you come from political clans, and you already have a franchise for your political positions. I was born, I said, uh, at the, and I grew up at the uh, back of Loreto Church in San Paolo, uh, walking to school and barely surviving with 30 centavos, you know, all through my uh, elementary and high school and college years. And so I was more focused on just trying to survive and finish my work. And uh, I got married so early, I, I was focused on trying to provide some respectable uh, thing to, to my family. And that's the reason why I became a lawyer at the very late age of you know, late 40s. And then, good, I'm still here. And thank you very much for somehow uh, not walking out on me because I heard you wanted to just sleep out after 30 minutes. They all laughed, you know. But uh, the, the biggest compliment I had was uh, when I was uh, getting assignments uh, more as, more, more as, as uh, you know, substitute in the likes of uh, Sandigan Bayan Justice uh, Rodolfo Palatao. 
and then you speak uh, after uh, the great speaker, uh, Justice Edilberto Sandoval, who was the head of the uh, criminal law department of uh, the Philippine Judicial Academy. When you have brilliant you know, justices uh, who are experts in criminal law with that kind of caliber, and then you are asked to speak about some uh, little things also on criminal law, uh, how do you expect to really match the support and uh, you know, adulation of their audience? You know? So one time I was uh, invited to uh, pitch in for Justice Rudy Palatao and he told me, hey Joe, they gave me uh, uh, anti-money laundering. Tamad na akong mag-aral ng ano, bagong mga batas, book one at book three, ang mga maniin ko. Anti-money laundering. Then later on, anti-terrorism also. Yung anti-money laundering, can you just substitute for me? I have two other points. Well, the long and the short of the story is when I opened the discussion on uh, the anti-money laundering, I dropped the bomb by saying, did you know that anti-money laundering started with Al Capone? And the audience, you know, about 60% are trial judges and the balance are veteran lawyers. Because this was a PILJA, Philippine Judicial Academy, and IBP sponsored, uh, what do you call this, MCLE. They, they were so silent because they didn't know that there is a... That, there's a linkage between money laundering and Al Capone. And so I said, uh, you know, we had a earlier speaker, Justice uh, Edilberto Sandoval, and I, I really do not know how I, I can survive. He ate up about one hour of my time, and we have a fixed timetable, so I have barely 45 minutes to finish this, and I don't want to hold you unnecessarily. The long and short of the story is uh, after I uh, I ate up already their time for more than one hour, so it was two hours, and I cut my speech and said, uh, I am already t- taking too much of your time. Some of you must have your commitment, so let me cut off my, my talk now. And I, I made sure I pinutol ko yun. Yung palang yung nakabitin yung paano ba nagkaroon ng, ano, ng money laundering involving si Al Capone. So, so tapos medyo pinipitik-pitik ko na yung issue ng uh, yung money laundering. Nagsimula talaga yan when Al Capone started buying in San Francisco. Most of the laundry shops talagang doon ang galing yung word na laundering. Oo. So, dinideposit niya yung illegal money niya doon sa mga uh, collection na kasama ng mga laundry shop. So, kung for example, 1,000 pair dollars yung laundry shop, idideposit niya ay eh, 10,000. Yung ika-11, legal money, yung 10, yun na nanggaling sa kanyang uh, pag, pag-ismuggle ng liquor. So, so, pagpasok sa banko, you know, eh, hindi mo na makikilala yon kung alin dun yung dirty money, yung $10,000, saka yung clean money ng laundry. So, di pasok ng pasok ng pasok. And so that was how money laundering came into being. E binitin ko. Nung pagkatapos ko nun, eh, sabi ko, at, at least natutunan yun na. And I still have a number of slides probably for another 30 minutes uh, Saka na lang ho natin, hindi, hindi pumayag, sabi nila. Din biskera, tuloy, tuloy, tuloy. Nobody went home. And because of that, eh, I was uh, finally called by the late uh, chairman, uh, Justice Amir Pina, Melesio Herrera. And uh, Rudy Palatao was a school bed, sabi niya. How oh, have you been hiding this din biskera? You never even told us that he can be part of Philippine Judicial Academy. So he was inducted. The professorial lecturer one, professorial lecturer two, a level ng mga 
retired justices so, dahil lang just sa lintik na money laundering so criminal law was really become you know, has become part of my life so ngayon tingnan natin we have a lot of interesting hypothesis dito sa barak samson criminal law and i would not consider criminal law that easy matindi sagutin pero ang question you sagot mo ba na madali eh tama you know uh, like uh, there are some very uh, and i'll talk about that no? I, i'll give you the usual format i'll i'll, I'll read the uh, problem and i will give my suggested answer following yung guideline ko na short sentences simple words direct to the point pero to explain further, ia-adlib ko na na hindi nakasama ro sa suggested answer para lumawak. Pero my suggested answer is my is very short. I think that that is already more than sufficient for a candidate to get a perfect score. Yung ano, burloloy na lang yung paliwanag natin para naman masaya itong get together natin. May nauna ng dalawa eh, na nagbigay ng version ng kanilang answer sa dito sa criminal law uh, I felt so slighted uh, on myself uh, on myself and against myself because of all of this uh, technology that uh, ambushed me for the past uh, almost, almost one month ngayon lang ako nakatrabaho and so uh, if, if my answers uh, pare-pareho kami ng sagot one was one is a public prosecutor the other one parang ang impression ko he just took the bar and uh, he was young, very aggressive siya. No? Mas maikli yung mga sagot niya at diretso rin. No? Pero I, I, there was one answer he had that I felt uh, hindi yun ang tamang sagot. So let's take a look at our thing. As usual, I will uh, group them and I will go to the structure of my answer as we go. Natuto ako dito sa kurtina natin. Eh. This is part of the latest uh, MS Office 365. Uh, this one, the uh, pasadaan ng gusto. Only for those of you who have not been watching my uh, how would you put, uh, my, my slides or my uh, YouTube uploads para sa inyo yan. Uh, bahala na kayo kung may niyan. You can always stop naman and take it. I am not changing this. And so let's move on to the next slide. And you will notice, uh, malinaw na malinaw, criminal law. And this will change depending upon the field we will be talking about. In this discussion, just like what I did with political law and uh, civil and commercial law, we're dividing criminal law into the three areas which were uh, covered by way of the questions raised. So, by way of sorting out, there were questions on the principles of criminal law. And we'll see the topics under that on the next slide. And then there were questions on the revised penal code, obviously. But the, there were tremendous questions also on special criminal laws. For some of you who have uh, uh, tried to master criminal law, no, that this is essentially malum in se. And this is malum prohibitum. You know? Pero hindi naman ganun ka strict. Kasi you will notice uh, there are also special criminal laws that are malum in se. Pinabol. Hindi umabot ng ginawa ng revised penal law. And so of these three, let's take a look first at the principles of criminal law and the questions that were given here. Okay, so the questions in, in, in principles of criminal law uh, handled the proposal to commit murder, the accessory after the fact, criminal liability upon death, malum prohibitum, and uh, praetor intentione. You, you will identify most of these are essentially under the topic of principles uh, of criminal law. And we, will, we will talk about that uh, in a little while. The second grouping is the revised penal code. So yun, kanina, lima. Ito, there is a question on chastity and uh, atlo yung properties, no? Two are theft. Pareho pang cellphone. Ewan ko bakit na-overlook ko. 
I pose a question on uh, robbery and the property and then liberty and security dito may kidnapping. Now, you will notice here that uh, I am uh, very uh, particular about pinpointing possible uh, compound or complex crimes because possibly ma overlook yun. And the other one is if there is, of course, some aggravating circumstances and there are na involved yung police, for example. Hindi lang dito, merong kinuhang uh, cellphone uh, in the process of serving a search warrant. Siyempre, uh, it's a certain SS warrant, police pa kinuhang niyo yung bag. Eh, you must be abusing your uh, position as a public official. Yun, mga hindi mapansin niyo. So, tingnan natin. And then on the special criminal laws, there were questions on the special protection of children in the public at 7610, anti violence versus women and children, the battered life concept under the Republic of 9262. Pumasok yung Data Privacy Act, eh, nasama na rin ito, if I remember right, sa political law. Tapos yung Safe Space Act, yung bawal yung bastos. Ito binigay. May mga cases ako dito. So, yan, anti-violent, actual cases. And then ito, nagbigay ng bonus grade in determinate sentence. So you can see here that there are five questions in special laws. At yata ng posibleng special law, binigay. Pagkatapos, meron din five questions sa uh, sa ano, six pa. That, uh, dun sa, what do you call this, uh, the vice penal court. And then, lima din sa ano, dun sa, dun sa, dun sa, dun sa, dun sa, So, with that, Matadu, let's take a look at uh, this one. Magigyan natin ulit yung heading. So, we'll go to the details now of the principles of criminal law. So, ito na yung apat na ilito, lima, one, two, three, four, five, five questions in uh, in uh, the subject matter principles of criminal law. The first question has something to do with the proposal to commit murder. Ang ginawa ko nito as they come within the principles of criminal law, yun ang nakalista sila dito. So at least pag nidiscuss tayo, nakagrupo na principles of criminal law, tapos nakagrupo din yung uh, uh, problems referring to the revised penal code. Tapos nakagrupo din yung uh, tawag dito yung special. So merong sistema tayo. Nakafocus tayo. Kasi pagka diniscuss mo, sunod-sunod, parang chapsoy. Hindi mo ma-focus yung, yung principles. So let's take a look at the proposal to commit mo. The question that was asked on the proposal to commit murder runs like this, and it is problem number nine. It says, during one of their intense operational meetings, the campaign manager of a presidential candidate openly suggested, dapat ipapatay na natin, na lang natin, mga bumabati ko sa kandidato natin. Later, the campaign manager was charged with the crime of proposal to commit murder. Can the campaign manager be convicted? of the offense charge or proposal to commit murder. Our suggested answer, no, the campaign manager cannot be convicted of his proposal to commit murder because there is no revised penal code provision or any special criminal law that provides a penalty for such an offense. And that is under Article 8 of the revised penal code. And then uh, uh, reiterating you know, yung conspiracy and proposal to commit rebellion, that is provided for under Article 138. So yung pag doon ka, ano, pag conspiracy ka, nag-propose ka ng rebellion or insurrection, then they, you can be, ano, you can be uh, brought uh, before the, the, the courts for prosecution under Article 138. Yun lang yung ano, merong law on uh, penalizing uh, propositions. Pero to propose a uh, murder, eh, patayin. Proposal to commit murder, there is no law in that particular case. 
Naalala ko tuloy si uh, Mayor uh, Fred Lim eh, one time. Tinawag kami ni Justice Rudy pala to. Yeah, Rudy, Jo. Ano kaya mag-privilege si speech ako? Sabi niya, napanaginip ko eh. Na-pinpoint ko kalahati nitong mga senador na kasama ko. Mga corrupt. And I have personal knowledge. Eh, kung ikwento ko sa public sa alam niya, sa, sa aking privilege speech na ang panaginip ko ay pinagpapatay ko sila. Will, will I be liable for anything uh, even under the rules of the Senate? Pwede ka bang palisahan ng, na kinayot mo yung panaginip? <laughs> Naluma ako eh. Up to now, I still don't know uh, the answer. Because, for example to, nagle-lecture tayo rito sa YouTube. Pwede ba ako mahabla rito ng ano, anything kung nasabi ko na, na panaginip, for example? Hindi na. Na panaginip ko, pinatay ko si ganun. Na panaginip ko, hinalikan ko si So that was the question that was brought to us by, by Senator Lim at that time. Si Justice Rudy is very smart. Eh, sabi lang niya, Fred, huwag mo nang gawin yan. Sabi niya, kasi baka hindi compatible dun sa image mo bilang senator. Nangyayari lang, parang lalabas dirty hari ulit ang, ang picture mo. Eh, iniwasan mo na mag dirty hari ang image mo. Nakitawa lang yun. Tama, hindi niya tinuloy. Okay, so that is the uh, first question under the rules of, uh, of principles of criminal law. Wala, there is no law that uh, will prosecute you for the purpose of committing. Second question, accessory after the fact. So again, part of the principles of criminal law. later na. So here is the question. The question on uh, accessory is problem number 11 and it reads like this. In an act of rage while playing golf, a high-ranking public official hit a caddy with a golf club at hole number 9 of the golf course. The caddy fell and died immediately. The public official called a loyal security guard who did not witness the incident. The security guard was instructed to put the caddy's lifeless body in the golf cart and dump it in the nearby lake. The public official wanted to make it appear that the caddy died of drowning. The corpus delicti of the crime was discovered. Both the high-ranking public official and the security guard were charged as co-conspirators for the crime of homicide. Can the security guard be convicted as the principal to the crime of homicide? Explain briefly. Our suggested answer, no, the security guard cannot be convicted as a principal. He did not directly participate in the caddy's death. He did not force or induce others to commit the offense. He had no indispensable cooperation in the killing because he was not present during the said killing. The guard is an accessory after the fact. He concealed the body of the crime to help the public official. And so that is uh, how simple the answer is. You know? Essentially, you are, the, the, the question revolves around who is a principal. Take note that there are three principals uh, in, in a crime. And I will uh, enumerate them according to their uh, sequential role. First, you have the mastermind, and he is the principal by inducement. No, siya yung talagang tagasul-sul. So, he, siya talaga yung unang ilalagay. And the principal by inducement may or may not be present. Usually, pag mastermind ka, no, uh, chances are, eh, nasa distance ka o nagmo-monitor ka kung ano nangyayari. So it is possible you are not in the scene of the crime. Obviously, yung principles by direct participation, nandun lahat yung sa crime. Ang mahirap, yung pangatlo, yung principal by indispensable cooperation. Kasi depende yung uh, how indispensable this cooperation is. Because pag bumaba ng konti, 
he now goes into the category, the second category, who is an accomplice. No, na-accomplice. Ayan, matatanda mo, na-accomplice sa tulong niya. Pero hindi indispensable, so hindi siya principal. So, yun na yung dalawa. Principal and then yung accomplice. Yung accessory, most of the time, wala yun doon. Pag nangyari na yung crime, no, he comes in after. And the biggest role of the accessory, kaya nga always label is as accessory after the fact. So you don't get mixed up with accomplice. No? Ako dati-dati, naguguluan ako sa accomplice, accessory, accomplice, accessory. Ah, I, I developed this little trick. Pag accessory, parati kong nilalagay ng burlori after the fact. To emphasize na wala siya doon sa scene of the crime. So he cannot be a principal. He cannot also be an accomplice. Yung accessory, malino nung wala doon. Anong major role niya? Normally, yung accomplice, no, he is the one that helps uh, the uh, principal either to escape. Yun. Siya yung ano, siya yung taga-drive. Yun. Second, he may be the one to help out. Nakaalis na yung mga ano, siya nag, ano, magtatago nung uh, yung corpus delicti. Either yung katawan, ililibing niya, pakapun niya, or yung pera, itatabi niya. So, makikinabang pa siya dun. Yun ang mga role na accessory after the fact siya. Okay. And so, he cannot be a principal kung wala siya dun, except kung siya ang master. Yun ang napakalinaw na explanation kung bakit yung kadi hindi pwede maging principal. To, to my mind, uh, a, a regular uh, <coughs> bar candidate would be able to answer this easily. Na, nasa basic sa akin yun, no? Pag hindi mo alam yan, mahirap na maging abogado. Eh, maguguluhan ka ito. The third question is something to do with the criminal liability uh, of a, uh, what you call this, of, of a uh, respondent you know, uh, when he dies during the time that his uh, case is subject to for review. So, ano bang effect kung siya ay eh, namatay during the time he is appealing his case? So the accused death, criminal liability. The question, which is problem number 13, was a prisoner who had been convicted but whose appeal was pending died due to complications caused by COVID-19. Should the prisoner's pending appeal be dismissed as a consequence? Explain briefly. My suggested answer, yes. The petitioner's pending appeal should be dismissed Criminal liability is totally extinguished as to both the personal penalties and the peculiar liability when the death of the offender occurs before final judgment. So may sentence na on trial. It is before the either the Court of Appeals or before the Supreme Court. No? Why would the appeal be dismissed? From the criminal point of view, when he dies, how can he ever uh, answer for uh, uh, the penalty? Hindi naman, hindi naman pwedeng ikulong yung patay na. Eh kung death, patay na rin. Assuming there is the penalty. Now, in so far as the uh, uh, civil liability is concerned, the hypothesis is uh, any civil liability from sources other than the criminal offense, may proceed as a separate civil action. Kung baga sa ano, remember, the civil obligation comes from dolo or from, uh, from, from, from violation of a criminal law. But if his obligation can still be derived from contracts, from quasi-contracts, no? from quasi-delic, or from the law itself, then you can proceed against the estate of the uh, accused rather than proceed with the criminal offense no, na naka, nakasama yung civil action. Yung ang suggestion na dapat gawin uh, when there is this thing. And you notice merong decided case, bagong-bago. People versus Milon, and that is on June 2020. Relatively very new, so definitely binding effect. So, criminal liability is abolished, is 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 uh, uh, is no longer uh, due and demandable upon the death before uh, final appeal before conviction. Okay. So, moving on to the next one. 
nakakatapos tayo. Ay ulit. Ano ba? Siguro mali yung Kodigo. Baka bumalik-balik. Okay. Uh, we will have to just uh, manipulate a little. Nagkaroon lang ng konting abiria yung ano, yung tawag dito yung link up. No? So, balikan natin. Nandito tayo. And uh, we were already done with this. Nakakatatlo. Ito na ikapat. Malong prohibited. Move on. Yon. Problem number 14 on Malum Prohibitum. It reads, A person arrested for playing Kare Cruz was charged with violation of Presidential Decree Number 1602 or the Anti-Gambling Law. The lawyer for the accused argues that the case should be dismissed based on an exempting circumstance, which is that the accused is poor. The lawyer argues that unlike those who gamble in big casinos with astronomical sums of money, Kare Cruz is the accused's only means of entertainment. In addition, the lawyer explains that gamblers from China, where gambling is illegal, are even welcome in the Philippines. Is the lawyer's argument legally tenable? Explain briefly. And if you were the judge here, hahambalusin mo lang sa ulo ito. Eh, exempting circumstance. Wala namang uh, being poor is an exempting circumstance. Diba? O, eh, ano relasyon nun dun sa, sa anti-gambling law in terms of yung mga casinos eh malakas mong paano? Eh, separate yung batas na yun. So let's take a look at the suggested answer. The lawyer's argument is not legally tenable. Kare Cruz in the Anti-Gambling Act is malum prohibitum. It's basic. Good faith or motive to include that the prohibited act is fit for the poor's entertainment is irrelevant and not an exempting circumstance. The law simply punishes the prohibited. Napaka-simple lang. At ano pa yan, no? 2015, meron awig na kaso, sagin versus people na ginamit yung principle. Malong prohibit yung walang, walang kutsi-kutsi. Basta pinagbawal. Bawal ang gambling. Walang mga exempting circum na justify. Wala ganun. Basta malong prohibit. Hindi pwede. Tapos. Ito na naman yata. I think the uh, what they call this the uh, linkage is not working. So, bakit natin Maganda pagka ikaw ang gumawa ng slides mo eh. Alam mo kung <laughs> saan, saan ang butas eh. eh. Kung may ibang gumagawa dyan. Tapos nagluko ng ganyan habang ini-slide mo. Lalo na kung actual live presentation, di mo alam. May ayari ka. Minsan kasi talaga kung minsan nagluluko yung ano. Oh, tatlong beses ko pinasadaan ito kanina. Para smooth. Pero I expected. Worst scenario. So, eto na ngayon. Yung paborito natin. Diba? At yung case, yung mistake ka o fact. Tapos meron yung aberasyo ikus. Error in persona. Tapos ito na yung pang-apat, prater, intensyon. Tingnan natin, ito napalakas na. Yung hindi intensyon na gawin, ay nangyari mas malala. So the last question on the principles of uh, criminal law runs like this. Number 15 ito. While attending to an enhanced community quarantine barangay checkpoint, a barangay tunnel confronted a resident for non-essential travel. Infuriated by the barangay tunnel's stone, the resident punched the tunnel's head. The barangay tunnel fell, sustained brain hemorrhage, and died as a result. Charged with homicide, the resident denies liability, arguing that there can be no conviction if there is no intent to cause the barangay tunnel's death. Is the resident's defense tenable? Explain briefly. Okay. Answer, no. The resident's defense is not tenable. The resident incurs criminal liability 
because his act of punching the tanod is the felony of physical injuries. Sinuntok mo, physical injuries, resulting to death, comprising homicide. Sinuntok mo, dapat nasaktan lang, eh tumumba na matay, eh may homicide na. The wrongful act of homicide may be different from the intended physical injury of punching the tanod. But the resident becomes liable for homicide even when that was not the felony intended. Ganun talaga eh. And that is provided in Article 249 of uh, uh, the Revised Penal Code. Pero talagang greater intentionin is in Article 4, Paragraph 1. That uh, you can be held criminal li liable uh, for the resulting act even if that was not your intended offense. Yeah, simply, simply, greater intention. If you notice our answers are direct to the point, and too short to even be uh, questionable, conclusive kagad yung sa akin. Yan, umuulit na naman, greater intention. Eh. Hindi umuubra talaga yung ating uh, link up doon. So that uh, we already are true with the principles, no? Ito na yung ano natin. At tapos na tayo dun sa principles of criminal law. Where what was given is five questions. The proposal to commit murder. The accessory after the fact. Yung kadi na pinili mo ng security guard yung namalo. Yung criminal liability upon death. Yung malong prohibitong yung gambling. Tapos yung greater intention yung nasuntok yung uh, tawag dito uh, barangay tano so we are about to go back to our uh, summary uh, table which will uh, uh, tell us tapos na po tayo sa limang problems sa principles of criminal law we are now moving to the main event which is the revised penal code in the revised penal code what was asked is on the subject matter chastity then there were three problems of property, dalawa sa theft, isa sa robbery. And then uh, finally, there is a question on the liberty and security before making the law. So let's take it first at this particular subject matter of justice. Ito medyo may controversial dito. Hindi oh, umubra. <laughs> Ayun. So this is problem number one. And let us read. Interviewed for a newspaper, a former beauty queen revealed that when she was 16 years old, she had her first sexual intercourse with her ex-boyfriend who was then 28 years old. In the narration, she said that she did not know what she was doing and noted that her ex-boyfriend of a more advanced age misled her to doing what he wanted. She added that at certain points during the encounter, she repeatedly said no, but her ex-boyfriend was too strong for her. The ex-boyfriend left her shortly thereafter. Was there a crime committed by the ex-boyfriend? Explained briefly. My suggested answer, yes, the ex-boyfriend committed simple seduction. Let me repeat. My position here is that the crime that was committed was simple seduction. In having carnal knowledge of the beauty queen, she was then single, over 12 but under 18 years of age, and was misled in deceit on her first sexual intercourse to do what the boyfriend wanted. So here I, I uh, would strongly insist that the crime committed based on the uh, provisions of the revised uh, penal code is simple seduction. Now, may mga sumagot yan na ang sagot eh, rape. Meron ding sumagot ng child abuse. Now, let me just address this 
not as part of the answer. So, ito na yung answer na ang tingin ko, mamaliin lang, itatama lang ng examiner. But if the examiner is thinking about child abuse, the boyfriend cannot be held for child abuse. He did not intend to dis- debase, degrade, or demean the intrinsic worth of the beauty queen as a human being. No? Kasi ang child abuse, meron nilagay na yung isang nagsuggest, nilagay niya yung uh, Republic Act 7610, eh, I think Section 5 uh, B yata. Pero uh, that, uh, there, there is a need to call attention yung case of Kalawagan versus People, which is very new, no? March 2019. Dito, sinabi ng Supreme Court na for child abuse to prosper as the offense, dapat the uh, act of abusing the child is intended to debase, degrade, demean uh, the, the child. E dito, e ang objective nung ex-boyfriend, hindi naman debase, demean eh. Hindi, gusto lang niya magpasarap. O, so, ano siya? Sedaksyon. Meron siyang L. O, hindi niya hinihiya yung beauty queen. And then, rape will not also prosper because rape uh, uh, cannot prosper here because the beauty queen personally admitted the one was her ex-boyfriend. And the, after a series of uh, sexual intercourse, tinanggap na niya yung mama na boyfriend. O, eh, pwede pa nagpakasal, di lalo natapos. Wala talagang rape, no? Pero the, the presence of the uh, word boyfriend that came from her, you know, in effect, fits into her declaration of the sweetheart theory, a strong defense against rape in favor of the accused male. Di ba one strong uh, defense is it offer mo na lang if you are the one accused of uh, raping the woman, is to offer the woman, assuming she's capable of marrying, marriage. Wala na, tapos na. But close to marriage, sasabihin ng lalaki, hindi sweetheart ko yan eh. Nag, nag, talagang nagkagustuhan kami at talagang nag, nagpasarap kami o proof eh maaari nga may konting pilitan doon sa una eh ulit-ulit kami o, so yung second, third, fourth at sunod-sunod na kaya nga naging boyfriend niya ako eh, eh masaya na siya o, kaya lang hindi mo bubura yung simple seduction on the first uh, sexual intercourse dahil binola niya eh o, Eh, therefore, eh, virgin yun. No? Sabi nga kasi first, di virgin. Tapos eh, 18 years old. So yun, that will fit into simple seduction. I remember my uh, criminal law professor, si Atty. Rojas. Diyan matinik si Atty. Rojas eh. When everybody thinks, rape yan, ayun, katulad ito, child abuse, bigla niya pipitikin yan. Hindi, simple seduction. And he would highlight kung bakit. You know? And uh, I probably am so uh, enthused uh, with, with him. No? Na, hindi ko alam kung he's already passed away. But, uh, he's a contemporary of my parents. Hindi ikan sila. And he was my professor in criminal law. But at the UE College of Law, kahit nasabi mong hindi siya nasa kategorya ni, ano, ni Justice uh, Sandoval at Justice Palatap, Talagang lahat ng estudyante ni Atty. Rojas, talagang hirap doon sa examination. Yung mga professor sa criminal law, natatawa rin. Eh. Kasi siguro hindi rin lang masagot. Ang hirap magtanong. Oh, eh, because he, he is able to to manipulate a little of the facts so that it does not in easily fit into the thing. Katulad nito, hindi nag, parang fit na fit sa child abuse, fit na fit sa rape. Pero wala siguro marami makakaisip na based on the elements of the offense, it is really a simple seduction. I, I submit that this particular answer is the correct answer. Okay? So yun ang unang-una under the revised penal law. Now, the second the problem in, a, in five uh, would be a, a crime on property. So, theft ito. While executing a search warrant, a police officer pocketed and absconded with the mobile phone of the occupant of the premises being searched. The mobile phone was not the subject of the search warrant. It was not enumerated in the order. 
officer. Did the police officer commit a crime? Explain. You know, I think uh, almost nine and a half uh, of ten candidates in the bar would be able to answer this. Obvious na obvious yan. You know, chef yan. Wala namang force sa pantings eh. Kaya lang, when I was looking at this, may booby trap ng konti. And I'd like to call your attention to this. Because uh, some suggested answers so did not receive the gist. My answer is yes. The police officer committed theft, but with an aggravating circumstance. When he pocketed the cell phone without the occupant's consent, with intent to gain, but without violence against or intimidation of persons nor force upon things. Eh, yun naman ang definition ng theft. But, I would uh, give a perfect uh, answer if, if this one is included. The offending police officer took advantage of his public position as an aggravating circumstance. Eh, nagpunta siya ro, may search warrant siya as a police officer. Eh. So, nakita niya yung cellphone, din naman kasama doon sa search warrant, binulsa niya. Kung ordinary lang siya magnanakaw, okay na. Eh, hindi police officer siya. So there is really taking advantage of his public position. May dala-dala pa siyang search yan. So I'd like to, uh, to under Article 14, there is taking advantage of public office as an aggravating circumstance. So yun ang uh, suggested complete answer ko on this particular question. Kung ang sagot, e eh, theft lang, may hindi, hindi perfect yung answer. Another problem, problem number three under the revised penal code is also theft. Tignan natin. During the Senate hearing in aid of legislation, a senator's staff member took a resource person's mobile phone without their consent or knowledge. Siguro yun, uh, without his consent. Kasi person. While the hearing was ongoing, the staff member read the resource person's messages contained in the mobile phone and hurriedly wrote notes which are passed to the senator. Thereafter, the staff surreptitiously returned the mobile phone. The resource person would not have noticed that the mobile phone was taken had it not been for a TikTok video posted by a journalist who was present during the hearing. The TikTok video caught the entire act of the senator's staff member. The TikTok video even had accompanying music and narration. So, uh, okay, the video became viral. Can the staff member be liable for theft of the mobile phone? Explain briefly. Hmm. Dito, nahuli siya sa akto kinukuha niya yung mobile phone at uh, kinuhanan pa niya ng, ng laman na kinukuha niya. So, let's take a look at how we can improve on this particular thing. Our suggested answer, yes, the staff member is liable for theft of the mobile phone. The taking of the cell phone without the resource person's knowledge and approval constitutes theft. To me, this straightforward to answer, to, to sentence answers is more than sufficient already. If you mention something about uh, the act of returning did not... Uh, negate the, uh, what do you call this, the, the theft, is to my mind unnecessary. Hindi naman tinatanong yun. Uh, and and uh, if the examiner would like to really focus on the accurate answer, yun lang. Gusto lang niya malaman pag kinuha. Yung whether sinuli o hindi sinuli is already irrelevant to the question. So, yun nilagay, hindi naman mali. Kaya lang, over, overkill. Okay? Hindi naman siguro mamali eh yun ang mga klase ng hindi dapat na ginagandag na hindi na mahirapan yung examiner na correct. Okay rin. Simple lang ang sagot. Okay, so that is question number 3 under the revised penal code. So let's go now to question number 4 and it says robbery. Ano kaya mayroong robbery dito? One Sunday afternoon, while standing at the corner of C.P. Garcia and Katipunan Avenues, an off-duty police officer accosted a motorcycle rider and asked them to alight. The off-duty police officer then inspected the motorcycle's compartment box. Pretending that a sachet of shabu was found, 
the off-duty police officer demanded 1,000 in order to prevent an arrest. Fearful of being incarcerated for life for a crime that was not really committed, the motorcycle rider readily complied. Unknown to the off-duty police officer, a surveillance camera caught the entire incident. Will a charge of robbery prosper against the off-duty police officer? Explain briefly. Our suggested answer. Yes, the police officer can be charged of robbery with the aggravating circumstance of taking advantage of his public position. Again, important na naman nakahighlight kasi when you pay, prepare, if you are the public prosecutor and you prepare the uh, information, no? when you don't put this in, no? then the aggravating circumstance of taking advantage of this year will not be considered anymore. Mababay pas na. So, a complete answer should mention that. No? And says, the police officer is guilty of robbery. Why? For taking the motorcycle rider's personal property, the 1,000, with intent to gain by means of intimidation. Yun. Maaring wala nga force, pero may intimidation. That would already be wrong. Threatening to arrest the rider for the planted shabu. The offending police officer took advantage of his posi public position as an aggravating circumstance ng suggestion natin na hindi lang kinukumpirma natin na uh, there is robbery to intimidation there is also an aggravating circumstance of using the position of officer as public of, uh, uh, for a public position it doesn't matter whether he is on of duty or on duty fact of the matter is nagpakilala siya ng police officer somehow either naka-uniforme siya o kung hindi naka-uniforme niya tapos niya ang kanyang uh, badge. Kaya lang takot yung uh, yung, yung uh, motorcycle. Okay? And last question. The fifth question under the revised penal code is liberty and security. And this is problem number three. It reads, the accused in a pending case forcibly snatched the daughter of a judge and kept her in an undisclosed location. The accused then called to tell the judge that the daughter would only be released if the judge would acquit the accused in the pending case. Did the accused commit a crime with these acts? Explain briefly. Now, suggested answer, yes. The accused committed the complex crime of grave coercion through serious illegal detention. The judge is being compelled to acquit the accused against his will by forcibly snatching his daughter and depriving her of her liberty. The serious illegal detention or kidnapping committed on a female is necessary for committing the grave coercion. Tingnan nyo, no? well, ina-assume natin yung, yung judge bibigay. No? And so therefore, there is uh, this uh, grave coercion. He was being asked to do something against his will. But that was achieved only by using serious illegal detention. So complex crime ito. The serious illegal detention was necessary in order to, pu to push the grave coercion. Ngayon, kaya naging uh, illegal detention kasi female and that is contained in the revised penal code. Pag a female ang kinidnap, syempre, merong ano yun, merong, merong effect yun na that becomes now serious illegal detention. Kung hindi naman female yun, no? Eh, ano lang yun, uh, ordinary, ano, simple, ano lang yun. Simple, uh, what you call this, uh, illegal detection. Pero pag female, eh, serious illegal detection. And there is where the citation is, you know, grave coercion under Article 286, serious illegal detention under Article 267, Paragraph 4, and then yung complex crime under Article 48, Section so medyo may konting ano to masasagot pero hindi kompleto maaring ilagay yung grave coercion ang madaling madaling ilagay dito yung serious, serious illegal detention maaring dugtungan din ng grave coercion pero baka yung, yung magagaling sila makakapagdugtong ng complex crime yung dalawa one becomes the means to achieve the other kinidnap 
para masindak yung ating judge. Okay? So, the only question on complex crime. And obviously, that is something that is expected to be known by the candidate. So, that essentially uh, ends up our five questions. Kanina sa principles five, dito sa revised penal code five. You know? And so, pupunta na tayo dun sa summary table para makapunta tayo dun sa special criminals. No? Mostly malum In the special criminal laws, what was given is Republic Act 7610, Special Protection of Children, Republic Act 9262, yung anti-violence against uh, women and children, the Republic Act 1017 on data privacy, Republic Act 11313 on the safe space, and then Republic Act 4203 on the indeterminate sentence law. Ito ay eh, medyo pabigay. But let's take a look at now the special protection of children. So ito, 1, 2, 3, tigli lima, no? 5, 5, 5, 15 ang binigay ng judge. Okay. Uh, let me just double check uh, na 15 yan. No? I have here the complete printed uh, questions. Eh. So, 15 lang. Ang huling huli yung greater intention. So tingnan natin dito yung special protection of children in the Republic of 76 States. Here is the, the problem. It says special protection of children, child abuse. To motivate their eight-year-old daughter to study well and have a better future, and parents resorted to making her kneel on rice spread on the floor, spanking her with a bamboo stick, or requiring her to stand in the rain for hours if her grades fell below 80 in any subject. Did the parents commit a crime? Explain briefly. This is problem number five in the bar examination. Our suggested answer, yes. The parents committed physical abuse and cruelty consisting of the child's kneeling, spanking, and standing in the rain in violation of the law on special protection and you will notice here, mga kaibigan, the objective is for the child to study well so that she will have a better future. The end, which is this one, very worthy, does not justify the means. Huwag mong gulpihin. Huwag mong palurin. Ang sakit-sakit naman nun. Ang sabi mo, kailangan maging valedictorian ka. Pag mababagrin mo sa 80, lumuhod ka dyan sa bigas. Pagkatapos, ang balusin ng bamboo stick, and then uh, stand in the rain for hours if your grade is below 80. I remember a, a very charming lady who was my cardiologist. Eh, sa tagal na paghihintay ko kuminsan sa heart center to get my uh, uh, dito, schedule. I had the chance to look at her at the great chance. Alam ko, uh, that time that I was, uh, and she was very senior already, even in terms of years. At the time she was my cardiologist, she was also taking care of the Secretary of Health. Si Secretary Asumin. Eh, kung hindi man magaling ito, sipin mo Secretary of Health, siya yung cardiologist. Ayok magsugal sa aking kalagayan, 35 years old. So, I ask her if she can be my cardiologist. So, she did. so alam ko, uh, she was president of the Philippine Heart Association, uh, the Association of Heart Specialists. Tapos head pa siya na medical staff ng uh, Philippine Heart Center. Kaya doon lang yung magbigat na yun. Until I was watching her, uh, her, uh, no, her uh, in, uh, certificates and diplomas. Ang muna nakita ko, elementary, valedictorian. Valedictorian. High school. Valedictorian. Bakit nang nangyay kong araw? Sinunod-sunod. Tapos, uh, Bachelor of Science in uh, 
yung, yung pre-med niya. Suma kum laude. Yung pura abo. Pre-med, suma kum laude. Eto naka, nasyak ako. Medicine proper. Suma kum laude. May nap ng wedding. Apat na academic, ano niya, trips. Puro number one siya. Pagkatapos, no? Kumuha ng medical board. Number one in the medical board. O talaga na ako. Paano mong tatalunin ito? Sobrang galing dito ka ang babae. Ang tangkad pang babae. At uh, you can see na yun niya. Barkado pa niya si Melda Marcos. Makikita mo talagang may sinabi. And then what is surprising is I saw her picture when she was in uh, college. Anak ng wedding. Miss UL, US team varsitarian. Eh, may bihira naman ang US, ang Miss Barsitari ng US na hindi maganda. So lahat ng qualifications na sa kanya na. And you know, she had that kind of aura na pagka client, ano kanya, pasyente kanya, umupo ka dyan, examining kanya, ito ko. Trabaho lang talaga. Most of the time, dadating ko na 6, alas 8 na kumisan ako na titin. And uh, she was like that. You know, she was very formal. Ano na, hindi na. One time, uh, I, I took the risk of talking to her. Matagal-tagal na rin yung talking to her. So I said, Cora, tinignan ko pa ako yung qualifications mo. Elementary, valedictorian. High school, valedictorian. Sabi ko, uh, pre-med, suma kong laude. Medicine, suma kong laude. Board, number one. Tapos may sparsitarya ka pa ng UST. Sabi ko, eh, hindi mahina. Eh, UST is a, a leading medical school. Medyo natouch siguro siya na lang yung naglakas loob na magmanggapi. Kahit naman ganun ang kanyang taas ng pride niya. Eh, tao rin naman siya. Sabi ko, paano mo ginawa? You know, she was very good also in psychology. Eh, bakit? Ako naman eh, accounting, suma kong laude ka din ah. Sabi niya, honor student ka rin sa UST. Eh, hindi ko ho kinaya yung valedictorian elementary high school ha. Tawa na kami. And so I said, thank you for paano mo ginawa yun. Perfect. Sabi niya, alam mo Joe, my father is a mathematics and engineering professor in Makuta. Engineering. So whenever I go home, I bring my card. He looks at my card and he always has a consistent difficult question. How many points are you ahead on the next one next to you? So ang tinatanong nung tatay, ilan ang buffer zone mo sa grade mo doon sa susunod? Hindi na pinag-uusapan na number one ka. Tatawa ko niya, sabi niya, alam mo Joe, sabi niya, talaga ang target to the law, lampasan talaga na gusto yung ano din. I-justify ko kay eh, one or two points na kalaman ko. Ipatay eh, ako sa tatay ko. Natawa naman ako. I remember this problem. No? Hindi ko naman natatandaan. Pinaluhod siya sa ano. Sa, sa, sa bigas. Hindi ko naman natatandaan. Pinapalo siya ng stick. Ano? And at the same time, uh, not her, uh, what you call this, she, she doesn't stand in English. But, but uh, grabe. So she was the one that, uh, she served also as my idol. Kaya, Normally, hindi ako bilib sa mga babae ang doktora. Pero pag gano'n naman eh, hindi mo na, hindi mo na titinan kung babae o lalaki. Eh. Ano naman gano'n? And after a while, you know, I showed her that I was following the regimen. Uh, PowerPoint chart ko yung aking blood pressure. And so sabi niya sa akin, one time when I passed the, after two years, I passed the treadmill. No? Yung nakakagulat yun. Sabi niya, you know, Joe, you are uh, my most intelligent patient. You, know, you really are intelligent and you should tell me to take care of yourself. And uh, you are able to really discipline yourself. Ano ang pinagin mo sa akin? Mag-happy na ako. Hindi rin mo, ganun ka galing na doktor. Ha? Tutuwihin ka na nagawa ko. That was what, the, uh, that was what gave me the courage to tell her after a while. Can I ask you permission from you? Uh, no. I want to go back to school. 
Sabi niya matanda ka na, 35 ka na, 37, 38 ka na. Mag-aaral na, mas matanda ka na. Sabi ko, look, that was the first time I saw her. Kalim yung ano, tinitigan ako ano, what? Sabi niya, look. Sabi niya, why? You want to kill yourself? Sabi niya, hindi naman ako ko. Eh, why do you want to, be, to take up law? Yun po ang childhood dream ko. Even if kamamatay mo, uh, sana po, doktor, lagay mo lang sa laki dun, kuna, sa atomic na bali, magpagod ko, o mas pagod ko. It's always been my childhood dream. Sabi niya, Joe, I promise you, sabi niya, if you go to law school, you will die in law school. Hindi, pahimik kami ng dalawa. Matindi yung tingin niya sa ako. Si Bey, you know, I know the life of a lawyer because my husband is a lawyer and my son is also a lawyer. And my, 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 sabi niya, my husband was reviewing for the bar when we got married. That's why I know how difficult it is. Assuming machamba, hindi ka mamatay, sabi niya. You know how stressful it is to be a lawyer Puro awa yan, puro stress yan. Sabi niya, that is not for you with a weak heart. May pamilya ka pa. Mabigat yung karir mo, sabi niya. Sabi niya, talaga bang gusto mo ikamatay yan? Sabi ko, doktor, hindi mo kailangan. Guys, I'm telling you, this is not the first time I've said this. You know, probably the third or fourth time that is recorded. I mentioned this. Just to let you know that if you are determined to be a lawyer, you should never give yourself an excuse na marami kang trabaho, wala kang oras mag-aral. No, if you want to be a lawyer, if yun, sinasaad niya sa akin, diretso lang, sa akin, you will die in law school. Oh my God, that was about there when I was 38. When did I, like, slow down din ako. I went back to, I finally took my law when I was 14. Alam mo na, 40. 40. Hindi, yung kansyon ni Vince Ledron yung song ko. Nandito ka pa. You know? Ngayon, tanungin niyo ako ngayon. You're seeing me in this lecture. Nandito pa ako. O, abogado. O, din pa ng college of law. At nakikipag-screamahan pa sa inyo on criminal law. You know? Ayan. Kasi mga kaibigan, I, I would really be very happy to see you become law. Please do not give me the excuse. Working student kayo, may sakit kayo, wala kayong pera. You tell me <laughs> whether I I can accept your reasoning. Anyway, napag-usapan lang natin. Pasensya na yung isa, nagsisingit ang mag ganito. It is really to challenge any one of you who will give the excuse na working student ka, duling ka, dingi ka, pilay ka, o wala ka. Wala ka namang honor nung ikaw yung nag-aaral. Eh, pag naririn, pag tapos hindi bis ka rin sasabi sa'yo, eh, ang dinanas ko eh, 47 years old eh, dapat patay na ako. Tapos gumraduate pa. Cum laude. At walang sip-sip sa professor yan. Bibigyan ako ng grade na 175. Kailangan 125. Anyway, maraming salamat pag tsatsagaan niyo makinig sa akin dito. This, this particular story reminded me of Doctora ano, uh, Abundo. Oo, she, her, her name is, uh, ang, ano niya, ang, ang maiden name niya is Pauline. So she's Doctora, uh, ano po, mumultihin ako, nakalimutan ko bigla yung kanyang first name. But her uh, maiden name is Pauline. And her, uh, Husband's surname is Indian. And so, on the next question, napahaba ng konti, ang kwento, on anti-violence against women, tignan natin kung paano mo bigyan ng kwento. Problem number six. And strange married couple decided to separate. As part of their amicable settlement, they agreed to ask their 14-year-old child to choose a parent with whom to live. The child chose the mother. Displeased, 
the husband ceased providing for the child's tuition and the wife's support. The husband was a vice president of a highly profitable company. Did the husband commit any crime? Explain briefly. The suggested answer, yes. The husband violated the law on anti-violence against women and children through economic abuse. This consists of not providing for the child's tuition fee and the wife's support. Those two acts of not providing for the child's tuition fee and wife support fits into the definition of economic abuse, which is one of the abuses defined in the anti-violence against women and children. Okay? So, uh, I don't want to prolong uh, the discussion anymore here. Malino naman yon. Third problem under special criminal law is the Data Privacy Act. Tignan natin kung anong tanong dito. This is problem number seven on the Data Privacy Act involving sensitive personal information. The head of a big company's human resources division copied and shared an employee's physical and email address, birth date, civil status, and some photos of a friend who found the employee attractive. Did the head of the human resources division commit a crime? Explain briefly. My suggested answer, again, very short. Yes, the Human Resources Division had committed a violation against the data privacy law for unlawfully processing through copying then sharing the concerned employee's sensitive personal information without her consent, said processing being legally prohibited and no permitted condition is present. Ano yan? Sagot. Say, ano yan? Uh, tawag dito, uh, nasa ba yung keyword na gusto ko sabihin dito? Uh, yung, yung ano, yung, yung legally prohibited and no permitted condition. So, no, unlawful processing ito. Confidential is what I was looking for, but I did not put it there anymore. Hindi pwede. And uh, the next problem is Safe Space Act. Ito yung pinatawag na walang bastusan uh, act. No? Okay, let's take a look at uh, the problem given in this particular subject matter, special law. It says Safe Space Act. Problem. While a person was passing through a construction site for a new hall of justice building, construction workers shouted, Hoy bakla! Halika dito at haprisin mo ako. Hoy bakla! Ang pangit mo. Bakla! Mukha ka pa lalaki kahit anong gawin mo. The person victimized by these remarks asks you, was a crime committed by the workers who shouted these statements? Explain briefly. My suggested answer, yes. A gender-based sexual harassment offense has been committed against a presumed transphobic, homophobic person by way of catcalling, unwanted invitations, sexist slurs, persistent unwanted comments on one's appearance. Sabi niya, pangit ka. The use of words, gestures, or actions that ridicule on the basis of sex, gender, or sexual orientation, identity, and or expression. Yeah, gender-based sexual harassment. Okay. And finally, ito giveaway, yung indeterminate sentence law. Nang matagal natin encounter, hindi naman natin naintindihan until the simple question. This is problem number 12. A crime defined in the revised penal code is punishable by arresto menor. 
finding the accused guilty beyond reasonable doubt of the crime, should the judge apply the indeterminate sentence law? Explain briefly. Our answer, no, the judge should not apply the indeterminate sentence law, which is applicable only when the sentence is more than one year. Arrest to minor is only one day to 30 days imprisonment. That is how short our answer is and no controversy. And so ladies and gentlemen, that would be the five problems under special criminal and so we have covered the five questions under principles of criminal law. We have covered five questions under the revised penal code and five questions in special criminal laws. To my mind, uh, ladies and gentlemen, again, just like uh, the questions on political law, the questions on civil law, uh, uh, commercial law, and taxation, and labor law. The questions are not easy. But the questions are not also impossible. A regular uh, law student, whether you're a full-time student or a working student, and you do your job well of studying, for purposes of proving to Associate Justice Marvin Yonen that you deserve an entry level into the legal profession, the question in criminal law, they're also reasonably fundamental. Nandiyan naman talaga. Ang medyo nakakaping lang ng konti sa special criminal law. Pero sa principles of criminal law, basic. Sa revised penal code, ang medyo nakakaping doon, nakita ko na yung dalawang sumagot, rape at yung child abuse. I digress with them. It's, it's a very simple seduction lang. But with this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to really thank you very much. May mga side comment ako, may mga side story. But these were all relevant to the issues that were brought up. So, isa na lang po yung utang ko sa inyo. Natin excited kayo kasi pinakamalaking mortality yun. Yung tinatawag natin na procedural law which also included I have already uh, done most of it, no? And I will just finalize it in this kind of diagram. Siguro in about a couple of more days, you know, two or three days, talabas na rin yun. So, the fact that I was unable to come to your aid uh, because of the little statics I had uh, before the bar exams and immediately after, I hope I'm able to come up with uh, some respectable uh, basis for you to review. Napansin ko, dahil late nga ako, Hindi ganun karami yung ano, hindi pa ganun karami yung viewers natin dito sa mga sabi-sabi. Siguro, napagod na yung mga examinees no, dahil one month na. Eh, baka pagka ginaganahan tayo ulit, pasadahan yung compare your answers because now that you have already uh, relaxed, siguro mas malamig na yung ulo nyo. Mas maaalala nyo kung ano yung bakit sa mga answers. And for those who will be preparing for the next bar. I hope this approach uh, is helping you out. So, maraming po salamat. I love you very much. Continue to patronize. And uh, <clears throat> at any time na uh, you have the opportunity, please pray for all of us and uh, pray for our uh, own fellow human beings in Ukraine. Medyo hindi ko alam kung kaninong side yung nakukuha pero para may sympathy ng Yung mundo is for the Ukrainian people. Pero dahil dihado sila, they're fighting very hard. In fact, meron na pinadalang message sa they are expecting now everybody to, everybody in Kiev, the capital, is expecting the Russian to really put the entire force uh, anytime now, in the hours now. And sabi, every man, every child, the bata, the bae, we will defend and uh, the whole world is impressed with the way they, they will fight for their uh, land and for their country. And I remember, uh, in closing, we Filipinos are one of the bravest and one of the most stubborn fighters uh, 
4 hour 1 cup of tea. Nakita niyo naman, itak lang, gulok lang. Lumaban sila bonipasyo. Gusto <laughs> sa mga pastila na ilang taong nalila tayo, inapit tayo. Pati yung mga Amerikano, hindi nila inapit. But uh, the Filipino was fiercest. When in the Second World War, when the Japanese came in, yung mga Hapon, mahirap mong ano yan, i-underestimate yung samurai, ano nila, yung, yung samurai tradition nila, patay kung patay, mati ka lang sa mga. But for the first time, tumasada sila, nakita nila yung mga malays, sinasaan nila yung kung ano mga countries, ano mga inchip. First time nila nakasagu pa ang Pilipino. And they saw how brutal the Filipino can fight. Kaya merong isang tao sa history. Ang pangalan ni General Douglas MacArthur. And he uh, asked if the Filipinos be allowed to fight in the Korean War. Nilagay sa front line. 10 Battalion Combat Team. Yung mga katabi natin, mga uh, uh, other United Nations uh, soldiers at the onslaught of the attack of the Red Chinese Army, atrasan sila. Yung Pilipino nandun sa hill. Oh, walang umatras ng Pilipino. <laughs> na, nasindak yung mga inchik na putrang na luso. Way by way, walang umatras na Pilipino. Of course, uh, I think two of the commanders, uh, detachment commanders, uh, was killed. And then, sumunod na yung ano, 10th Battalion Combat Team, yung 10th BCT. Tapos, dumating na naman yung ano, the 20th BCT. And uh, the greatest uh, American Caesar gave his complimentary comment to the Filipino soldier when he said, you give me sabi niya, uh, a, I think, a battalion of Filipino soldiers and I'm willing to fight anytime, anywhere with them. Continue. Continue. Kaya pa yung mga Pilipino, hindi tayo basta-basta. We should be proud of our nation. Should be proud of our nation. We are known to be fighters. Kahit yung mga kapatid natin sa Mindanao, yung mga Muslim brothers natin, I am, not, I am very sincere in saying kung meron tayong dapat kilalahanin na matatapang, matibay, yung ating mga Muslim brothers, eh pag tumabi tayo sa kanila, Pilipinong-Pilipino, yung nagkataon lang ang relihiyon nila, Islam, relihiyon natin, nabawala tayo ng mga kastila, ganyan pa tayo. But we should love each other and we should continue to appreciate that we have brave Filipinos. No? We have the brave Andres Bonifacio. We have the brave Antonio Luna. We have the brave uh, Francisco Dagohoy. We have the brave Diego Silang. Ahead of them was a brave Lapu-Lapu. No? Ang dami mga heroes natin na hindi natakot, hindi inatras. Kaya, huwag nilang mamaliitin ang Pilipino. And one day, when we rise slowly to show the world that we deserve that kind of respect that belongs to us, we will rise. Mahalin natin ang bayan natin, mahalin natin ang sarili natin, and let us be proud. Meron na nga nagsabing Filipino, the only one who dared to say, this nation can be great. Sana buhati natin yung salita niya, buhati natin ang, 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 ang bayanin Pilipino and we fight for our nation so that one day we become wealthier, more happy and more proud. Marami pong salamat for giving me the opportunity to say my little piece here in this little YouTube. Pagka kami sa nabubisit kayo, putulin nyo na kung nyo na pakikita. So thank you very much and uh, sa akin, good night na ito. It's almost 12 o'clock and I am so happy 
FM already uploaded yung huling-huling uh, uh, second to the last na bar examination question. 